It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where your DJ's at? I don't know where I'm at. I'm here with you guys. And also I have... Oh, here's some good news. I have two other DJs will be here shortly. Uh, it's always fun with uh, everything. everyone who has everything. And, uh, you know, it's always a fun thing. And I want to wait for this topic because actually this topic was brought up last week talking to uh, our favorite Indiana DJs, and uh, they actually gave the topic for tonight to talk about. But uh, first thing first, we'll have to talk about the two of you guys, or one of you, or whoever you are watching right now. And if you are watching the 2, 4, 6, 20, or people out there watching on YouTube, first thing first, thank you. And if you are a subscriber to the channel, thank you for subscribing to the channel. It's greatly appreciated. Um, Just want to sit there and appreciate this for every moment that you guys are on here watching this and watching the show. We do this to share our knowledge. We do this to have a little bit of fun and we do this to make sure that, uh, you know, we're on top of our game with uh, DJing and we share a lot of information. That's why we try to have great DJs here and a lot of uh, guests come on and share their uh, ideas and share their knowledge. And it's always great to hear that couple things going on. Uh, don't forget, it is almost officially summertime. You know, uh, it's come up very quickly. Uh, those summer weddings, those summer events, uh, graduation parties, and so forth and so on. I know you guys are working hard at it. And also, you guys know that everyone out there is working hard every day and is greatly appreciated. But if you could do me another favor, we, another great appreciation would be if you can hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so that way you can always see the uploads here on YouTube. And hit the bell icon to make sure that you know when an upload of video comes, like we have every Monday. Um, I try to make sure we have a video every Monday, unless we have something going on. Um, it's one of the things that, uh, you know, it's always fun. And those videos are what we do here on Twitch on Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock Central Time. We go live on Twitch. And this way you can ask questions and interact with all the DJs here. I have some great DJs from around the country. And, uh, you know, once in a while I do get a DJ from uh, other parts of the world as well. And that's always fun to have. Uh, we, you know, we got a couple of um, people from other places that uh, always, always greatly appreciate that. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough for everything. And first thing first, I want to also say to everyone out there, do me a favor. Tell me how you like the new intro songs. There was two of them. There was one last week and uh, one week before. I want to know how you guys enjoy that, like that. The outro, you know, the little outro music, you know, telling you uh, to please subscribe and uh, dropping that uh, music there. So I want to make sure you guys enjoy it and like it and have fun with it. And as always, you know, make sure that you also follow here on Twitch because we've got great stuff going on. And we have, well, oh, we have one half. <laughs> we're, we're, uh oh, we're, where's the boss at? Oh, you're not, you're not on. <laughs> <laughs> it's the technology side. There we go. There we go. Where's your boss? She's working. She's oh, she's working. She she cuts hair too. She does. Yes. That woman. She's. I'll tell you. She's very talented. Oh. This is the the question we're starting off tonight is actually a question that your lovely wife uh, brought up, which I thought was a great question, and I wrote it here uh, so that way we have it for tonight. And uh, one asked the panel of this is um, what do you need or should work on you and or your business? So is there something that you need to work on for yourself or something you need to work on in the business? And the other part of that question is how are you going to do it? 
How are you going to make that difference and change things around? What, you know, do you want to learn a new skill? Do you want to learn a how to do something? Do you want to learn a new product? You know, is it something else in life that you want to learn? And I'm actually going to start off with, um, I'm actually going to start with Brentley with this one here because of the fact that he always has a lot of skills and has a lot of information. And uh, what is the thing that you're working on that you want, to, that you're trying to work on or you want to work on and how are you going to do that? The most I'm work, the biggest thing I'm working on now is my MC skills. And yeah, we've had Mitch Taylor come down. My business partner just went to Marbecca and I'm probably going to go do the Bill Herman thing in June up in the twin cities about, uh, his uh, seminar about curating the customer experience, so to speak, and hand in hand with that has to be is definitively working on your MC, MC skills to produce a better experience for your guests. Not saying that mine's bad in any by any means, but I know, or I personally feel that on the MC side of it, and maybe even in a point of the experience side of what I give our couples. I've kind of plateaued in my own head and that it's great where it is, but I know there's something that I could do personally, be it learning, be it watching some more, you know, other MCs work to improve what I'm offering to my couples and their guests. Okay. Well, here, here's one of the things with MC. Do you want to emulate someone else or is there something else you just feel you're missing or there's something else that you feel that, you want to present or you just you just want to see what else is out there or step by all means any chance i get to learn something and seeing what else is out there i am all about and not trying to emulate someone but i feel that there's it's something i'm missing that would make me better i'm not sure what it is but once i've and maybe it will only be able to propel me to the next step of, you know, say there's 20 more steps I have to reach to be some incredible MC. And maybe what I'm missing right now will only get me to this step, but open my eyes to the next three. So that's what I'm hoping to discover. And honestly, when I look at, you know, my MC skills, there's nothing, there, there's nothing bad about it. But after watching Mitch and seeing the big influx of DJs, all of a sudden, all going to Marbecca, I know I lack the emotion that everyone else is utilizing from learning Mark Becca, going to Bill Herman, going to Mitch Taylor, and anybody who's in that side of the wedding scope. And it's the biggest gripe, or not necessarily gripe, but biggest stumbling block that Mitch Taylor has always found with me. I am not emotional when I do my introduction to guests. I'm very, I'm, you know, not necessarily trying to be like Nick Spinelli. All right, get up out of your seats. Let's make some. I'm not trying to do that, but I'm just not at a point where I feel I, you know, I should be with the MC side of it. And when I find whatever it is I'm missing, I'll be like, oh, poof. Just like, you know, how you might be stumbling through your DJ app and all of a sudden find a neat and new cool way to do something that you never knew that had always been there. You just had to stumble upon it. So that's what I'm hoping to stumble upon. Okay, And maybe I'll never find it, but every, you know, chance we take to go, like when we went to Midwest DJs Live, listen to Bill Herman, listen to Mitch Taylor, and what they have to say and how they present things, if it makes you think about what you're doing, going back and trying to change it, all the better. So that's what every one of these courses has helped me change, but I want to find what I'm missing. Okay. Okay. And again, you're taking some, you want to take some classes, you want to go to some seminars and see how to do that. Okay. So you, that's how you're going to move forward. The one thing um, I know I've talked to plenty of photographers in this one, and this is something we don't do after talking to a bunch of photographers. We never ask people to stand up. Or we never ask people to wave their you know, napkin above their heads because that can interfere with pictures. So a lot of times people ask people to please stand up. And a lot of photographers actually, I've talked to are not a big fan of that. Uh, some don't mind. They don't care. They'll work around it. But a lot of them are like, yeah, you have everyone standing up and I'm trying to take a picture. And then I got a bunch of hands or towels or napkins or whatever flying in the air. It makes it harder. But sometimes people, couples want that. So it's, 
it's one of the things that I know a lot of times with the uh, MC and the uh, classes like that, they'll tell you, you know, they want to give energy, but sometimes energy may be too much with, with people and they may sit there and do something that the photographer doesn't want. So it's, it, it's, it's interesting to, when you go to those classes and stuff like that and listen to them talk, um, there's a lot of great information there, a lot of great stuff, but sometimes also talking to, you know, the photographer and so forth and so on that day, it could change how you do something for that wedding. Cause again, it's a, it's teamwork between yourself and the photographer, videographer, the caterer, the, <laughs> the facility, so forth, so on. And that, that's the, that's a hard part. That's one of the things that, uh, you know, again, you want to improve your skill and that's, uh, um, that's one of the things you want to do. You want to make sure you improve it, not, uh, make another uh, problem down the road with something else. <laughs> so next person I'm going to ask, actually ask Jordan here, uh, since that your wife is not here tonight, uh, this is an honor of her. She asked the question. She's, she's right here. She is? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Did I call you <laughs> out when you're not coming? No, I am. I just got finished work. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm asking your question We that you, you wanted to ask. So... I'm going to ask you guys, uh, since it's your question, I just asked Brentley uh, what he wanted to improve. And the question is, what do you need or should you work on, you know, you know, improvement, either on yourself or on your business? And then how are you going to do that? So, Taylor, I'm going to start with you. I'm going to go to Jordan, your husband, and let you guys, you know, answer each one separately. What do you think you need to improve for yourself or for your business? And how are you going to do it? Um, definitely talking in front of people and being more confident. Um, I get Jordan does a lot of the talking. That's why we're a good pair. Not willingly. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I definitely want to work on that. Get getting more comfortable and not so shy. There's nothing. Uh, I I will tell you, Tracy doesn't believe me. I'm a shy person myself. But yet, look at us. We're we're DJs. We're in front of all these people. You know, when we do a gig and we talk uh, and we're on, we're doing this show together too. So it's one of the things that I know, I see how you are. I know how you are. You're a great, fantastic person. I'm sure you get in front of people with that beautiful smile you have, as well as your great team behind you as with your husband, you guys knock mm -hmm. it out of the park every time you do an event, but you know, working on it, that's that self-motivation. I know it's hard. And the thing is that sometimes you got Got to push yourself a little bit, but I know you'll do it because you're do great. It. Just got to suck it up and do it. <laughs> but you're you're awesome. That's the thing. You're you're great. Yeah. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> and what about you? What about you, sir? Oh uh, well, I will have to say that uh, Brentley put nail on the head um, with uh, the MC work, and uh, my thing is I'm trying to make the guest feel it i guess it would be the words is where i'm trying to find it i think um what i mean by that is i'm trying to like make the guests feel like there's a reason that they're there um uh, i mean you know they they taught them. those people how to walk now they're gonna run i don't i guess that i don't, I don't think your wife's microphone is on i hear her but oh. i don't hear her <laughs> sorry i turned her down so it didn't sound weird when she wasn't here. Oh man. <laughs> Someone's gonna be sleeping so, on the couch tonight. <laughs> I already do. No. <laughs> Kids kick me out. Well, yeah. I have, I have a dog. Being that, honest. I, but, I have my but, I have I have my dog that kick, she's not here right now, but she kicks me out of the bed quite a bit because she wants to sleep with mommy and she's she's a fifty pound uh mutt and she likes to sprawl out and, you know, she's got her little paws out and stuff like that. You know, I've done it with other dogs, but she likes to take over the top half of the bed versus the other dogs or the bottom half of the bed. So, yeah, there's been a few times that she's, uh, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to move because it's easier and simpler. <laughs> I know the pain. <laughs> so, yes. get, getting crowds more excited, that's what you're looking for? Um, not more excitement? necessarily excited. Um, I'm just trying to, like use my speech and my intro to make them feel a part of it, I guess. Like you, Mitch Taylor, more even personal. Like that. Yeah. And Bill uh, would yep. tell you that yep. too. And uh, I think Bill said something once to me personally, he said, um, only you feel awkward. They don't think you're awkward. 
you feel awkward. You didn't walk away and they go, who's that guy? And the way I actually learned that is I started filming my grand entrances. So I'm not posting or anything. It's not like good quality. Like I'm just putting a camera down and filming it for myself, like a voice recorder. And when I did one, the first one I did, in my head when I did that speech, everything was, I was stuttering, slurring my words, no one's name was right. I watched that video and that's not what happened. It was all in my head. So like getting over that awkwardness is something I'm working on too. There, like, there's perception and there's reality. And the reality was in your mind, again, you said in your mind, your own mind that you're making these mistakes and reality- you weren't. And that's, that's the thing is I'm sure, uh, you know, you and Brentley, as well as your lovely wife there, for first work in MC skills and trying to get more and more energy and trying to get you know, for yourself, energy for yourself to build yourself up to talk to people. It's a hard thing because you have all these people in the room. You don't want to disappoint the couple. You don't want to disappoint the client. You don't want to disappoint the corporate company, whoever you're you're working for. And you're trying to build that and have that entrance. You're trying to give that presentation, trying to give that acknowledgement to whomever it is. There's my reference to speech. There's my someone coming up there to, that's won a prize. It could be anything. And you want to make sure that people not only hear you, but they feel they're part of that special occasion, that special moment. They had those great memories in their mind. And I understand it wholeheartedly. You know, that's one of the things Tracy and I work on because uh, we split MC work and she actually, she does the grand entrance because she middle, she uh, meters the people into the room. So she does that part. I do all the special dances. So cake cutting, uh, first dance, daddy, daughter, mother, son. Uh, and then she goes back, you know, again, she does speeches. So um, she does a grand entrance. I do cake cutting and we go to speeches. She goes back to speeches and she introduces the person, says, okay, father of the, br of the bride, John, here you go, John, here's the microphone. And, you know, gets John a microphone and then takes the microphone back and says, you know, she may have a few words afterwards, maybe like, okay, great. We got our next one is, you know, the prayer from, you know, father of the groom or whatever the, the case may be. She's up there doing that. And then I take, again, back over all the special dances. So we split MC work between the two of us. But the thing is that, you know, is there tweaks and stuff like that? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to Tracy. Sometimes, you know, if she gets a little, little louder, you know, I got to turn the volume down a little bit and stuff like that, but she's very consistent in what she says and what she does. And she's very good at it. And people actually compliment her because she's very calm. And the one nice thing, and I will tell you this, Taylor, ha being a young lady, having a woman's voice, m us guys are designed to listen to women. So it's, it's one of the things, the mental thing, when you have for out there, yeah, when you out there, that's way way think like Alexa and all those smart think systems are all female voices because <laughs> people listen. It's psychological. People listen to it better. They 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 feel calmer, and they actually bring more attention because of that. And all you gotta do is basically, you know, kind of be like one of those smart devices and talk, acknowledge everyone, and tell people what they need to know. <laughs> and it's, it's I. It's, Go ahead. I really keep telling her I want to do, I'm being a little sarcastic here, Blink-182 crowd work, like where we talk to each other. <laughs> or or like, you know, I say a sentence, you finish the thought with a sentence kind of thing. We're kind of like when, a, when you see like a, a keynote speaker, but there's two of them and they kind of, I, I don't know if you've ever paid attention to how I've, they like, I've work seen off that. each other kind yep. of thing. I don't know. I've seen that. To, and that that's that's the thing is that um Tracy and I have some banter ba not banter, I can't say banter, but <laughs> it's that it's that friendly, you know, husband and wife talk uh on things, and you know, it's like we're going off on each other far as you know, she's saying this, and I may say thank you, Tracy, for that, and go on to the, you know, to this. So there's a little a little bit of back and forth, but most of the time it's more or less, you know. We're, we're trying to make sure we're doing everything we possibly can to take care of the client and take care of the couple. So again, I'm glad to hear that. And then both you guys, how are you guys going to execute your improvement? How, Taylor, how, how are you working on your improvement? Are you talking more in front of the microphone? I know you're on here and, and you guys, I know you guys love it. To improve it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know I you got nothing. <laughs> I, I know you guys are on here. You love true. it. 
You went to Vegas. I guess, yeah, I did. There you go. <laughs> I just, I'm the type of person, like, I can't think about it. Someone just has to throw me out there and say, this is what you're going to do in two minutes. And then I'll be like, okay. And that's how I forced myself. Her mic is still not on. Is it not on? <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah. Can you hear me now? A little more volume. How about now? There we go. Okay. Yeah, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You went to the seminar. I guess Vegas. I guess I did go to the seminars, but yeah. Well, again, you have to work at your pace as well, especially with a fa having a family and everything else going on. It, it, yeah. it takes time. But the thing is that I know what kind of person you are, talking to you, seeing you, uh, you know, talking to you at, at, at wedding shows and, you know, in the, in the kind of after show and stuff like that. I know what kind of people both you guys are and, you know, you're awesome people and you will you'll rock it out. No problem. I, I have no worries about that because you guys are awesome. And speaking of awesome people and awesome person, I have to go to my friend in Ohio, the great state of Ohio, Mr. Dwayne Dixon over there. Uh, Dwayne, I know that you're a teacher and you're getting ready to end the school year there and go on to your beautiful summer and enjoy yourself. A well-deserved little break from the uh, the uh, the action and fun of a classroom. But um is there something that you want to work on to improve either on yourself or your business? And if so, how do you want to execute that? Um, for the last two months, I've been taking a line dance class on Tuesdays. So that's why you don't see me until nine o'clock or a little after because I'm rushing coming from the line dance class. So I've been learning that because that's still a big thing here in Cleveland with the um, older folks. They'll, line dance or hand dance quicker than they'll do, you know, regular dancing. So I'm trying to learn that. And my next step is to basically come up with some kind of cheat seat so I'll be able to teach it. Um, that, and then also I want to work on my MC skills. Not not introducing the, you know, the bridal party and, you know, the, the ceremony kind of stuff, because I can do that. It's more so of like, your club or festival DJ, you know how they be like, throw your hands up and all that crowd in the action. So that's why I want to be more comfortable with. Okay. That's, I haven't figured well, that out either. That's it's so Dwayne for the club aspect of it as a DJ, this is what I teach, you know, a couple of kids that work in the company that DJ clubs with me, the club DJ MC part of it is so simple. You know, what song you're playing, you know, when the drops in the song are coming, like when people are going to sing. So, like, right, if you play Kelly Clarkson since you've been gone, you know the first 45 seconds of that is her mumbling about, hell, something, 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 blah, 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 blah. Then right before, you know, since you you right know when the chorus is going to come on, 10 seconds before that, get on the mic. All right, here's your turn, everybody. Let's go. And they will go right into it. And I've been actually working that aspect of my MC skills at the clubs harder than i ever been before, especially this school year. Because I realized this year, you know, from a few student years back, people were booking me for my MC skills out of the club and my DJ stuff. So now I'm trying to make it a point to be more in their face to sell those weddings. So now when they're realizing, yeah, you told it, you know, and just like all the group participation dances tell, tell you to do this, you know, step to the left, jump to the left, whatever it tells you, they want to be told what to do. In a club, you have free reign. Like, there is the other the other night, there was literally a girl going around taking pictures of people lifting their tops. So I finally went, all right, someone was going around and I threw on drop them out from Wheeler Walker. And the place went up. Not only were everybody doing the flashy thingy, but they were doing it as they were told for the girl. So the club aspect of it, we know the music we're playing. We know when drops are. We know when things are going to come up and down in it. You just need to pound out right in between those. Or if you're trying to do something right before an intro, of, you know, like before a song starts, loop an outro for eight or 16 bars, say what you got to say, and then slam over. That's the easy aspect of it all. So I, so I, I, get, not, I, just, I, I guess I just have to get out of my shyness. I guess <laughs> I'm, I'm used to dealing with middle school kids where you say something, they just look at you crazy. <laughs> See, exactly. And it might take, you know, rumplements flows freely here in lacrosse, especially for DJs. And I'm not a fan of it, but 
every time I look up, somebody is handing me a shot as of late. So a couple of those in, I'm even more on the mic. I just have to remember once we get to a certain point, back off because I might say something stupid or I'll lose my voice because I'll keep going. Well, I, I see that um, lacrosse lives up to its uh, drunkenness there with uh, people lifting their tops up to uh, show it. Hopefully she's asking guys as well as girls, you know, both sides. That way the guys can show off too. They're, the guys they're, didn't need their yes. they're six pack or they're, in my case, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm a keg. I'm a keg and a half here. So, you know, I'm way beyond the six pack. Uh, but hopefully... Uh, Hopefully, whoever the young lady was taking pictures, hopefully it was, uh, you know, it was it was a fun thing. And I know that the, oh, yeah. I know Coop, <laughs> uh, Coop Blue Cam always has a great video up there of lacrosse. So, oh, there's going to be some from this last weekend because the big dirt tournament was in town for five days or four oh, days. I'm I'm sure I'm wa I'm waiting to see ones from Blue, Coop Blue Cam with some guy walking with darts in their forehead, you know, and not, not I'm not talking oh, the metal ones. I'm talking plastic ones. Oh yeah, because the, <laughs> the plastic Insurance. one. I, I love my cricket. I love my 301. Uh, I, I love, I, I love doing that. And it, it's, 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 it's fun. But the thing is that, yeah, sometimes uh, alcohol makes you get out of hand a little bit. And Mr. Dixon, I cannot see you being shy, especially being a teacher. I know you said the kids just look at you like you, you got a third eye or something like that, but uh, you know, adults, I would think they would want to, uh, they, they're a little bit more for a little more easier to deal with than kids. But yeah, but see, see, the funny thing is, I'm I'm like that with the little kids, because that's many times where I'm bouncing around, crawling on the floor, having fun with the little kids. Then a principal walks in, or my my um advisor walks in, and then it's like I'm caught I'm caught off guard, and I get like <laughs> kind of I feel funny. <laughs> I can't yeah. see that, but I I can see maybe Jeff oh doing something crazy over there in North Carolina because uh, <laughs> I, I, you know I listen to everyone and I, I again I watch video and stuff like that and I hear people talking to the microphone. I've yet to hear anyone here cool thing. Uh, Tommy and unfortunately Tommy t today's Tommy's birthday by the way, so wish him a happy birthday on social media. Happy um, birthday, Tommy! If you're watching this, happy birthday, Tommy! <laughs> uh, but the thing is that. Um, you know, I, I watch everyone's uh, skills on there, and I never heard anyone on, on any social media say anything, you know, bad or that. You know, everyone always says uh, Brentley has one of the best voices out there, how he said stuff. So it's like, yeah, it, it, I, I read that comments all the time on his on his social media and stuff like that. And they're like, I, I, I see that. But Jeff's got a great voice, too. And uh, Jeff, are you uh, are, are you doing anything crazy there or is there something you want to improve either for yourself or your business? And if there's something you want to improve, how are you going to go ahead and do that? How are you going to execute that improvement? Uh, you know, there's probably not one thing, but uh, everything about my business uh, I would like to improve. But um, uh, I don't have anything that's at the top of the list. I think it's, you know, a little bit of everything. I'd like to do a little bit better marketing, um, you know, off season. Um, I'd like to, I'd like to uh, get a little bit more, into um setting my cues for short mixing for a lot of my songs uh, a lot of those i don't have set so a lot of them you know just you know some you know you got you know six thousand songs you don't get you don't get to them all um but um you know those are the main things you know for quick mixing you know you find yourself having a quick mix out quite often and um so you know i'd like to have points set for that or at least cues um you know, emceeing, uh, I'm not a big talker. I'm not a big uh, hype guy. That's just not my thing. Um, you want to, you want somebody to hype up the crowd, the, you know, you hire another DJ. I'm just not that guy. I, I do my bare minimum and uh, I've never had a complaint that I'm not doing enough. So I, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with just doing, you know, the, especially for you know, the, the times that uh, we need to hype up a crowd, like in a, um, uh, for instance, you know, a high school prom or a high school uh, homecoming, you know, sometimes they are already hyped. They're already, you're playing, if you're playing the right music, you do not have to hype the crowd. They're, they're just going crazy. So, um, so for that, you know, I, I, I'm just not the, the, the hype type of DJ. And I know there's some on, uh, 
on YouTube that do a lot of hyping and, and that's fine. That's their, that's their thing. That's their, their spiel. And that's, that's fine. I, I just don't do that. Emceeing at, uh, at weddings, uh, it comes pretty easy. Um, but I like to do the simple thing. I like to type out what I'm going to say and, and have it written down. I rarely go by it, but, uh, if it's on piece of paper in front of me, I'm more comfortable that it's there and it, just helps remind me what to say and what's coming up. Uh, but I will freelance that almost every time. So, you know, but it, it, long story short, uh, I'd like to work on everything. How am I going to do it? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> then, then, then the other part is finding time to do it too. That's, that's the other right. part. Cause I know I Jeff, books. you have your regular full-time gig. I know Brentley, he's got the bar gigs and he's got the uh, special events on weekends. Mr. Diction has his, daily gig i know taylor and jordan they're always working on stuff and you know they got their daily gigs they got their family you know they got younger kids um i know dj fire who just came in he's always working on uh, landscaping and his 15 youtube channels including a drone <laughs> channel and everything i know mike james he's also there right there hey what's up mike uh what's he's up? working on stuff during the day and then i want to go to cool thing real quick before i go to uh dj fire and uh, mike james uh want to ask you a uh, cool thing and down there in South Carolina, is there something that you want to work on that you want to improve either for yourself or for your business? And I see that you're at your office right now yeah. working hard or hardly working one of the two. <laughs> and <laughs> is there something you want to work on or is there something you want to work on for the business? And if there is, how are you going to do that? How are you going to execute that improvement? Well, as an autistic DJ, I tend to get overexcited about things. So I want to work on my MC skills. And my mind is like racing a mile a minute, trying to get everything done and trying to make everything perfect. And I tend to trouble over my words, you know, not pronouncing people's names right. And I also want to work on my mixing because my fingers don't really aren't coordinated well. So I want to work on my mixing. I want to work on marketing through social media, hoping to get some more gigs in the future. And there's just a lot of stuff that I want to improve on. And, and I also want to work on, yeah, I also want to work on not sounding like a club DJ, like loud and annoying. So I want to take it nice and calm so I can focus on, you know, on DJing and putting on a good performance. And that's one of the things also, I, I know that you have, you know, uh, some barriers there and go working past those barriers, but I also know you do a lot of gigs. I've watched, you know, you got your, your YouTube channel is really awesome. I've been watching some of your gigs. I don't see a bad DJ on the microphone when you talk on the microphone. I don't see that. Um, there is, I, I see that, you know, in over the years, because again, I watched your, you've been on here and on, on the show for a long time. I know, you know, a long time ago, you're a little more hyper. Now you're a little bit more, not, I, you still have hype and energy, but you're not as hyper, which I think you're a little more chill, a little more mature, which is mm -hmm. a great thing. And the thing is that well, I, try, I, well, I, I try to hold, yeah, I try to hold it in until after the show, then it just comes out. <laughs> it's really hard for me to do being autistic and trying to be accepted by the rest of the DJ community. That's another thing is I want to try to be accepting by the other djs especially with youtube i also want to focus on youtube as well well just keep at it just keep at it man i know that uh, you do a great job and uh, again you're the best dj on the beach down there in beautiful south yeah. carolina yeah. and uh, <laughs> Fre uh fred the, the godson just said you are accepted and you are accepted in the dj community don't think you're not uh, just look at your some of the barriers that you have, some of the things you, you have to work on a few things. We yeah. all do. We're human. We all, again, you heard every single DJ here, except yeah. for Fire and Mike so far, that they <laughs> want to improve their MC skills or they want to improve this. Or You heard Jeff. He's got 30 things he wants to improve upon. They're all little things like marketing <laughs> and stuff like that. You know, I want to improve on marketing. I want to be a little better at emceeing. I want to do that stuff. So it doesn't matter if it's Jordan and Taylor. It doesn't matter if it's Dwayne. doesn't matter if it's you. doesn't matter who it is. We all want to improve and move ourselves forward. And that's that's a thing. It's called growth. And working on that growth and getting things, that's that's always a hard thing. But the other part is finding time. And again, I want to applaud you for finding time and getting and improving yourself. Because again, I have seen improvements with you. Keep on that steady path, man. You no, know, I and I did get a compliment at the fifth grade glow night that saying that I was an interactive DJ, like I was interacting with the kids and 
dancing with the kids, like with the cha-cha slide and all the Cupid shuffle and all those dances, just interacting with the kids. Yeah. And well, that's not bad that we're all big kids a little bit, you know, some more than <laughs> others, but you know, uh, it's one of the things sometimes getting out there and dance with the crowd a little bit and jump up and down a little bit, having some fun there, right there can get people excited and enjoy themselves. And I want to go down to central Illinois down there in the, the center of the heartbeat of the state of great state of Illinois with two great DJs, uh, DJ Mike James and DJ fire. Uh, aka Nathan, uh, with oh, his doing tonight. <laughs> yeah. with all their channels mm -hmm. and all their stuff going on, and it looks I like only got the one I only got the one channel. Brother. You, well, you, you got one brother? channel, but you got like 15 awesome. irons in the fire, brother. You got the, <laughs> you're doing reviews, gig logs, all this Hell stuff, yeah. you know, <laughs> tech talks. Yep, we're in the studio right now shooting a video for B Topper, actually. There you go, see, and then Mike has just now officially partnered with sheds so there's going to be lots of videos coming out and he finally got a partnership with sheds good for you good for you man good for you well i'm going to ask you guys the same thing i've asked all the panel this actually came in from taylor she uh we we're talking last week uh, in the green room and she brought up a great great topic uh last week and i'm like this is awesome this is why uh you know everyone here is on this show because we have a lot of great djs and mike i love when you're on here too because you have a lot of great insight so I'm going to start with you on this for the two of you guys is what do you need or should you work on for either for yourself or your business? And then how are you going to execute that? How are you going to improve that? How are you going to change that? So Mike, I'm going to start with you. How would you, or what is there you need to work on or improve upon for yourself, or your business and how you're going to do that? Right now, for me, I think it'd be about the same as everyone, and it's going to be marketing. Social media marketing, I mean, I need to be like, like, buddy, I know you're super busy. You're working probably two days a week. You know what I'm saying? I mean, for the most part, like, just like Solstice out in California, guys working three nights a week. I mean, I'd love to be at that point. I don't know if the market is here in this area, and maybe that means I need to you know, spread out you know, a little further, maybe into Terre Haute, into Champaign, into Effingham which of course ups my travel time and distance, but uh, I, I I would just like to be working as much as I can. And if you guys do watch my YouTube channel, you know I'm now getting into uh, the inflatable photo booth and the photo booth stuff and all of that, which uh, I have gotten a couple of bookings on that, but I feel like that should be booking more, but I need to get more of an internet presence and a marketing presence out there, whether it be just even, uh, you know, my own my own website with my own private domain, things along those lines. And those are things that I'm working on right now. And uh, I may be partnering up with another DJ a little further north, um, DJ Bob Bass, because he may be booking me on to book my photo booth with his service as well, which that would be fantastic for me. So I'm really trying to expand that and really just stay busy. And that's that's the hard part is marketing, I think, is a, a crucial part of all our businesses because we're all small business people. And when you're a small business person, you don't have the resources like a McDonald's or like a, you know, any filling major company, Costco, uh, you know, your major food stores, you know, you can go through your food chains. Um, well, not only that, but now the market seems to be flooded. It seems like, I mean, there's so many people out there now, like it used to be, I'd get tagged in a post, you know, for someone's wedding reception and be me and probably like eight other people I already knew. Now it's like 50 people and people I've never even heard of, you know, I mean, I'm just like, where did all these people come from? There's always going to be small area for you know for such a small area to have that much saturation i mean it's getting tougher and tougher to get gigs well again it, it's one of the things there's always going to be this is the thing i always tell people there's always going to be competition there's always going to be someone cheaper there's always someone that does this or does that that you don't do and that's fine they're not your client is every person your client no do you have to maybe branch a little bit more I'm glad that you got the inflatable uh, photo booth. I wish that you weren't that far away because in the past, like uh, I, the wedding show we just did this past Saturday, Sunday, someone asked about photo booth there. I'm like, yeah, we know we have a couple of photo booth companies we worked with 
Mm -hmm. I, I, again, I wish you weren't so far away because be like, hey, I got, I have a guy, <laughs> and have you do it? No, absolutely. I mean, if the but, if the money is right, the travel's not that bad, and setting up photo booths and running it is not like setting up my DJ equipment. No, no, stuff, you know, no. But if if it's one of the things that again, you're three hours away from me, I, you know, you yeah. you had to make sure it's worth your while, so you had to charge accordingly. But it it's one of the things that you know, when I see stuff like that, and I see your branch not doing more and more things. I'm like, that's a great thing that that shows that you're growing your business because in business, to. you're either growing or you're basically shrinking. If you're shrinking, you're basically dying. Your business is dying and it's not going better. And again, you're not going to get every single gig. Not every single person is your customer. You're going to be sitting there and, you know, give out your number to a hundred people, a thousand people and get one or two phone calls, you know, just like, you know, on the knot or any, anything, Facebook, any social media platform, any business platform. Again, look, you worked this hard. Now you got sheds now in your in your basically your catalog of product you're going to review for from all this hard work you've done. You've actually accumulated anything tougher. And, <laughs> yep. And you've done all this stuff here with them. You have now two companies. And again, I know you have got a couple companies that are after you to, to, you know, look at their products. And that right there is another huge thing. Now you're getting some product that you can use for your business. But also, hopefully, you know, revenue, views, whatever, and you're adding it on there. You're getting, you're doing stuff, and you're doing the right things because obviously, you're a leader in the area, and that's one of the things that's diff, uh, that that basically puts you differently from everyone else. Is that you can tell them, you know, now you've been a DJ for a long time, but also, what is the difference between you and DJ X? This is the difference between myself and them. Whoever they are, and that differentiates yourself from everyone else in the area too, because you can say I'm an expert at because the, the actual the, the companies who sell the lights to the DJs are coming to me and asking me to represent their product and, and do videos for them because it puts me as a professional and puts me as an expert in that area. So that's a helpful thing for you, and I wish you a lot Absolutely. of luck in that. I'm glad to see. Thank you. I appreciate it. So uh, it, DJ it Fire. <laughs> yep, it's DJ Fire's turn. <laughs> DJ Fire, Nathan, uh, hey. what what do you need to do or should do or work on for your business? So what would you need to work on for your business or yourself to improve and how you're going to do it? How are you going to execute that improvement? What I probably need to do is just hire DJ Mike James to do all my gigs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Well, well you know... <laughs> he's a friend though you can't can't blame him. he's a nice guy i had dinner with him he's a great guy him and his son is he's got he's got an awesome son as well hopefully uh mike's bringing his son out and maybe have him run the photo with while jim uh while mike is running the uh the dj side of things you know but oh, it's one of the things mike always jokes like i'll, I'll be like man I... <laughs> like i got this gig or something and i'm like they're what was he saying they were wanting like i don't know we, we always joke about it like so he'll be like so they should have hired me, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't, probably marketing. I haven't posted as much uh, on YouTube much. I mean, only at least I've got videos in the works, but product reviews, my lawn care. I mean, I'm working from 7 o'clock in the morning until 6.30 at night. Normally, Mike is here at like 10, 11 o'clock in the morning shooting videos. It's late at night and he's here shooting videos because I'm busy throughout the day. Um and I mean, and I just got over a back injury. Too. Oh yeah, he was down for a while, so that's why he's just now. But um, uh, I mean, I I still want to learn, you know, DMX stuff. I'd love to learn more about DJ controllers. Um, definitely marketing more, getting more business. I mean, there's people all the time that ask me. Like I saw they had our where I used to live. They had our spring festival um, just this past week, and um, they, uh, everyone was asking me, you still DJing? And I'm like, yeah, I've just been busy and really haven't got anything. And they're, you know, another thing is, well, how can we have a DJ at the Legion or how can we have a DJ there, you know, where you used to do for, you know, everyone for the community can come out. And I'm like, uh, well, they don't call and book me because they don't want to pay up front. Uh, they don't want to pay anything very good. They want to pay two, three hundred dollars or, you know, 150 bucks and think that's all fine and dandy. Um, and, you know, it's, they don't want to pay much. And it's like, they want me to bring out a good show and not, you know, 
not pay very much. But well, uh, hopefully, hopefully that will that will change. Hopefully, you'll be able to get that taken care of. And you know, again, uh, you know, I know you're busy and stuff like that with everything that you know you do post, especially with your uh, your landscaping business. It's a hard thing. With DJing that's, too. That's, that's hard too. I, I'm to the point where I need someone to be editing for me almost because, I mean, I've got videos for product reviews. I've got people that send me stuff asking where the video is. And I'm like, ah, I've been busy with lawn care. I've, you know, come home, edit till two o'clock in the morning, go to bed, get up at seven, you know, six thirty, seven 7 o'clock in the morning, go out and do mowing, landscaping, tree work, which uh, I don't know if you all uh, have had it, but here in Central Illinois, we have hundreds, if not thousands, if not billions, of cicadas everywhere right now, and it is so hard to work because they're in your face, they're on your arm, they're on your leg, they're they're in your lawnmower, they're all up in your face, and it's so hard to work. I've had several people wanting tree work done. And I was like, uh, not until those things are gone. Right now, those... right now, we are in the middle of two brews of uh, cicadas. Where we get the first one coming out, the second one will be in the next couple of weeks, and they'll be they'll be covering. They're 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 covering each other, and um, I was just at uh, se uh, Saturday night at a. Uh, friend's house in their backyard and area of a tree basically just covered all the little shells up there from cicadas and tracy went out today out front uh we have a tree right in our front yard and uh she saw her first cicada sh uh, shell on the tree so the little cicada came out of the ground crawled in a tree and molted out of it and came out of the shell and grew, has little wings and walked away and left a little shell behind so Yep, yeah. it is that time of year for us here in Chicago. We have a lot of fun things. And if anyone wants to have cicadas uh, sent to them, uh, again, uh, I'm sure they will be your neighborhood sometime soon. Uh, maybe you get your normal ones. just make a little bit of noise. You see one or two here and there. But here in the Midwest, in uh, Chicago, Central Illinois, Iowa, uh, Missouri, uh, I think parts of Kentucky, a little bit of touch of Wisconsin, um, you go on the maps, you can look at for the cicadas and uh, I, I've seen people with cicada T-shirts uh, saying they survived the great cicada. <laughs> in there, the there are people cooking those things and eating them here in our area. They're saying, "Oh, they're so tasty," and I'm like, uh, "I'll just take your word for it." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's not my alley. There was on the uh, uh, the local news they had a thing uh, making cookies with them. I'm like, "Yeah, no, sorry, no, thank you, uh, no." No, I'll, I'll stick. I'll stick with my beef and chicken and then pork and stuff like that. You know, so. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's pretty much what I need to work on, buddy. Is is promoting myself more, uh, working on you know flyers, promotional stuff to be able to you know I need to do pictures of my setups and I do have a really nice setup coming up this or the event coming up this fall. Um, it's going to be my first high school uh, homecoming, and I'm going to rock that place. Maybe. Have Mike come in and help me on it or something if he ain't got something going on. But well, good, um, good. I'm glad you. I'm so glad to hear that. that. Leads, uh, I'm hoping that leads to uh, to more stuff. Which honestly, we got uh, the school here contacted me, Mike, and two other one or two other DJs about DJing for the prom. And from what I'm understanding, uh, the kids I've talked to said it wasn't super great. And I was like, well, you can see the DJ you picked it wasn't super great either, but. Well, we had to put bids in on it, so the lowest bid won, I guess. Well, I here, here's I one of the things: good DJs are not good DJs are not cheap. Cheap DJs are not good, and mm -hmm. that's the thing that people have to look at. It can, every market's different, so I'm not telling you guys out there or anyone what they need to charge for their market. It's always X, but there's always again, there's someone will be like, "Oh, this DJ is cheaper. This DJ has this." Or this. There's always difference between them. I know here on the show. Everyone here works very hard and they're great DJs. That's why they're on here. Uh, I love hearing their information. They have a lot of great ideas. And again, uh, like I said at the beginning of the show, they share a lot and I appreciate every single one of them, what they do and how they do stuff. So I have a quick question for everyone. This is a show of hands. Um, now, I, again, I just did a wedding show this past uh, Sunday. Uh, it actually came up uh, very quickly. Uh, they reached out and said, hey, uh, we have open slot. Um, and Tracy and I were talking about it, and we we're like, okay, you know, they have one slot open. You know, it, it's a, it, it, they're, they're a great wedding show. Um, they said, hey, we have open slot. You know, are, are you available? And, you know, they um, 
they are a good traction. They're a good way of doing things. And I love, um, love how they, uh, they attract brides and so forth. But I want to see a show of hands here. Who here is thinking of doing a wedding show this summer? I know usually wedding shows are fall and maybe be beginning part of winter, January, February, because it's usually quieter. But anyone here is thinking or want to do a wedding show this summer, June, July, August, anyone here? I do them all the time. Well, I don't know. I mean, they have don't, one in Effingham, but that's in January or February. Yeah, right? usually, a lot know. of them are January or February, but there's a few of them that are during the summertime. Does anyone, would anyone here want to do one in the summertime? And I don't see anyone raising their hands. And it's because, be you know, it, but I don't think anybody around, I don't know anybody around here that has them in the summer. There, yeah. Well, the, the place that the company I just did uh, this uh, this past Sunday, they have one June second. They have all, they have every single month. They have uh, at least one, if not two, every single month. So they have between you know I, I, I want to say they have like twenty or twenty two shows per year. So they have. Um, they have buddy, a lot. I have a I have a quick question. So I've been getting a lot of spam emails. Well, they were regular emails, and then they're they're a company called Bark. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Um, yeah. Saying that such and such is looking for a DJ in this area, but then you have to pay to get their contact information. Have you ever Not dealt worth with them? It. Don't do it. I I didn't think so. I've I blocked it. Now all the messages are going into my spam. I cleared it out last night. Woke up with uh, 175 messages from Bark. Taylor and Jordan, have you, you didn't uh, sign up? Did you? No, I haven't signed up. No. Yeah, that I had that happen too. They they just sign you up and then they start sending you stuff. I I, I don't trust it. Anything where you got to buy that. credits to bid on stuff, it's just a race to the bottom. Yeah, and to me, that's if, how if, I feel. If these least. people are paying another company to find a DJ. Do you know how hard it is to look for a DJ? DJs in my area. Click Google search. Thank you. It was free. You didn't have to pay a company to look for you a DJ. I could probably pick up my phone and just close my eyes and select a contact and call them and be like, hey, do you know a DJ? And they'd be like, yeah, I know three. So, right. So, yeah. I well, there's there are certain websites that do attract certain clientele, like the Not Wedding Wire. They attract a wedding uh, much more. That's because, a little different. Because the way they I market themselves. And then, again, they, they don't charge the end user, the client – they charge you as an advertiser to advertise on their on their page, so it, it's a little bit different there. But the ones that you have to that you get an email saying, "Hey, uh, you know, John Smith is looking for a DJ," and click here and pay for you know X amount of dollars. Some of them are decent, some of them are bad, you know. Uh, but the thing is that you know, like 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 like. Jordan just said, you know, it's a race to the bottom. And I would definitely would say that, you know, that would be very true. I haven't personally used Bark, but I know back in the day, like Thumbtack or Upwork, one of them gave me some credits. And yeah, it was just like, a, do you want a DJ for 300 bucks? This person will do it for 250. Well, I'll do it for 200. And it's like, yeah, oh, they're like Groupon. They you, this one you pay and they give you the person's contact name. Like it kind of says their first name, but it won't give their last name, and it won't. It only gives like the first two digits and the last two digits of their phone number, and then it like stars out the rest. And then once you pay, it'll give. And then you contact them. I guess I don't. I don't know how it works. But it's a pay. Yeah, it's I, a pay to play site. Yeah, it, it's. I would just say you know if it's not for you, don't don't pay for it. Don't do anything. Don't, um, don't I would do just group walk away. Even. But here's one. Our, here, here's the last question of the night for you guys, real quickly, because we have a few minutes to wrap everything up. Um, who here, of everyone here, for gig wise, who here actually has openings this summer for special events? I'm not talking about you know their <laughs> um, you know normal stuff they do at bars or whatever, but I'm talking about you know weddings. And who here has openings on like you know? July or August? Does anybody here have a few dates open? I do. A few. Okay, a few. Dwayne does. One or two. Pick One or two. Okay, me. so okay. Technically, no, because I'm holding two dates for the club in lacrosse, 
because one of our DJs there is about to take off to go to school, but he doesn't know when he's going to take off. So I may lose one Friday and have to do it the sister venue, Lacrosse Beer House. Otherwise, I'm booked solid all the way until the end of Oct- until October 25th. What about you, Jeff? You are you pre booked this summer? No, I've got openings. Okay, but uh, I'm also looking at taking some vacations, so I'm not. Oh, no, there you go. Not a big hurry to fill them, but you know, if they come along, I'll take them. Are you going on a cruise? No, I just got back from a cruise. So, I know you're going you know, on another one. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. One a year is plenty. I, I, you know, if I if I went on a cruise, I would probably be sitting in the jacuzzi for 24 hours a day, just sitting there and have oh, them bring oh. me, hey, bring me another uh, Coke Zero, please. You know. <laughs> oh, I got. What about go. you, Hunter? What about you in uh, South Carolina? Are you? Oh. Uh, you have openings. Nope, not until this Saturday, which is my cousin's graduation party. And then after, I don't get anything until after the summer, which is a wedding on September 29th. So. Oh, there, well, there you go. So, But you are DJing again uh, at the uh, fireworks store uh, for 4th of July, right? Nope. No? Oh, mm-hmm. man, I always look forward to that gig because it's always this fun. Year. Not this year. <laughs> oh, man. That that that's that stinks. I always look forward to that because that's always cool when I see you out there DJing at the at fireworks store. But yeah, I gotta it, go. It shows you there's a little openings here and there. Again, people have a few dates open, and it's it's kind of what I'm seeing with other DJs as well, including ourselves. And this is time when we were just talking about uh, how to improve ourselves. Mm-hmm. Is maybe take one of those dates that we have open, and say, hey, you know what? I I'm open this date. Maybe the date I work on, fill the blank in. You know, I want to build something. I want to do something. Do something for yourself. Do something for your business. Do something for your family. Have some fun. You know, enjoy yourself. Jeff's going to take a vacation. Hopefully, you know, Taylor and Jordan take a little vacation with the kids and stuff like that. And maybe Brentley takes his daughter, you know, comes down, you know, comes down here, visit his mom or something like that. Or uh, Mr. Dixon goes to spend time with his family or uh, Mike. You know, he spends time with his son and his beautiful wife and Nathan hangs out with people and, you know, and, and you know, just everyone gets to enjoy themselves. I don't themselves. have a beautiful wife. <laughs> you don't have a beautiful wife, but you have a lovely girlfriend. I don't girlfriend. even have a wife. It's not like I'm saying I have a wife and she's not beautiful because then I don't have a wife. Yeah, you don't, <laughs> not, you're not married yet, but we'll, we'll, one day. It will happen. Uh, maybe. Women are, go. Thanks for having me. Women are expensive these days. You got to go, Hunter? Go ahead and go, ahead, go. go ahead. See you later, Hunter. Uh, yeah, but hopefully everyone has a fun summer. And again, take some time for yourself. Enjoy this summer. Enjoy everything out there, and just don't wreck your head against the the wall saying that I need to have every single weekend build with everything. Because those weekends that you don't have a gig on, make it for yourself. Make it for an improvement on your business. This is what tonight's episode was about. And I want to thank Taylor and Jordan for both of them, especially Taylor. Bring this up for uh, a great topic. Thank you so much. Uh, this is one of the things that uh, I always love talking to everyone and finding out uh, great, great information. Uh, like before, I, I there's just we're just filled. We're blessed with uh, very talented people who know a lot and love to share. So with you out there and everyone out there, thank you for tuning in tonight. And then I'm going to have actually have. Um, I'm actually going to have uh, Mike James because he hasn't been on here in a little bit. Mike, I'm going to have you take us out tonight. <laughs> Say goodnight to everyone, please, sir. All right. Well, I thank everybody for showing up for the show tonight. Uh, have a good night. Take care of you and yours. Um, much love to all you guys for coming on here. And uh, nice meeting you guys. Some meet for the first time. And I'll try to be on the show a little bit more often. Thanks for having me. Thanks, guys. You guys have a good night.